Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. Did you know that a button sewn on in the center of a buttonhole is likely to work itself open? Same is true if the button is sewn down too tightly against the garment. In this short video, I'm going to show you not necessarily how to sew on a button, although I do show that, but where to sew on a button. So if you're ready, let's go. First, I just want to say if you've lost that missing button and it is right there front and center of your garment, you can take a button from a lower part that is not so noticeable and put that in the front and center position. So let's talk about button placement. There's two things you need to keep in mind. Where is the button in relation to the buttonhole and how far off the button is from the fabric? I think our natural inclination is to put the button down in the center of a buttonhole like this. When actually you want the button to actually overlap part of the garment and not just be in the center of a buttonhole, when a button is sewn in the center of a buttonhole, it can easily work itself free, especially the combination of a front button closure and a crossbody bag. So for vertical buttonholes, you're going to sew the button 1 8 inch down from the top of the buttonhole. On a horizontal buttonhole, the same idea, just on its side. The button overlaps the garment and not just in the center of a buttonhole. So if you have left over right, your button will be about an eighth inch from the left side of the buttonhole, one eighth inch over, and the opposite, right over left, one eighth inch over from the right side of the buttonhole. To find out where exactly the button is gonna go, you're gonna button up all the buttons and you wanna line up the hem, make sure it's lined up at the bottom there. And then you just want to get it as flat as possible. After you got it nice and flat, take a pin, go down about one eighth of an inch from the top and stick the pin through the garment. That is where your button is going to go. So I wanted to point out that if your shirt has any kind of shaping like darts or pleats or tucks, you're not going to be able to get it so flat. So just do the best you can. And once you've measured down 1 8 inch from the buttonhole, go ahead and unbutton a few of the buttons to make sure that the pin placement where the button is going to go is lined up with the other buttons. Because sometimes with that shaping, it doesn't not laying quite flat. It doesn't actually go in the same line. So I know where the button goes height wise on the garment, but I want to make sure that it is over far the same distance as the other buttons. So you can, on a garment like this that has these lines, I can easily see that. But you can also, of course, use a straight edge to make sure that the button placement is in the correct amount over. So if you lift the pin quickly, you can stick your needle down in. And I've used a double thread because it's all purpose thread, just knotted the two ends together. And I am bringing the knot, I am going through the front of the garment and letting the knot be on the top of the garment, the right side of the garment. I do that to hide the knot underneath the button. You, of course, can put the knot on the back side, but I just like to um, hide it. So stick your button on and check that if it's a four hole button, that it's in the same pattern as the other buttons that are still on the garment, crisscross or parallel lines. You don't want to sew your button on too tight because the button actually needs room for the buttonhole to go underneath it. And that's what I meant by how far is the garment off of the fabric. That buttonhole fabric has a thickness to it and the buttonhole needs to be able to move with you as you move. It needs to be able to move without straining or pulling because that will work the button out of the buttonhole sometimes. So don't sew on your buttons too tightly. Don't sew them on crazy loose either. You want to aim for the thickness of the buttonhole. So just keep it a little loose. Then you're going to go up from the back side, one hole down through the other hole in the button. If it's a two hole button, if there's four holes, you'll make a couple passes 
on one pair of holes and then make a couple passes on the other pair of holes. I go about three or four times and then I knot it on the back side. My knot is I make a one loop when I can see the knot, see where I'm knotting it. I make a loop with a little stitch and then I put my needle through that loop. Now I have a second loop that I've just made and I put my needle through that. Work that needle down to the, work that knot down to the bottom with my fingers and then pull tight. It makes a really nice knot. And just clip off the ends close. And if you want, you could add a drop of, of fray check to that knot to keep it extra secure. So when you're dealing with something that's thicker than a shirt, that buttonhole is pretty thick there, you want to make sure the button is looser or loose enough that the buttonhole can fit comfortably without strain around and under the button. When you're sewing on a coat button, the fabric of course is even thicker, so you really want to make sure, ideally to make a thread shank or use a shank button if that's what you have. See, there is a lot of extra room for that buttonhole to fit over the button. Make sure to watch my video on making a thread shank if you do have some coat buttons to replace. I'll put the link to that video in the description below. Well, I hope you found that helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.